Hi guys and welcome to our first practical video about the module of web servers. Here in this practical videos I'm going to show you how can we install web servers. We're gonna see how the web servers are working and therefore we're gonna start and uh, searching for exploits. We're gonna start going to exploitation of that servers and I'm gonna show you how can you exploit them. So in today's video I have prepared a topic about the Python web server because it's really the most simple one and uh, it's really useful in many cases. I'm going to show you how can you install Python and therefore how can you install a Python server using Windows. So the first thing we have to do is to open a web browser. It can be Firefox, it can be Chrome, it can be even the Explorer. So open it and go for like Python Windows download. Keep in mind that Python comes predefined with uh, most of the Windows distros, so you don't have to worry about it. You need to run on the app to get update and upgrade to get the latest version of Python you want. But in Windows, the Python does not come pre pre-installed and we have to manually install it. So we can go for uh, downloads. You see python.org slash download slash. And here we have different versions about the Python, we have the version 2 and the version 3 and now we're focused mainly on the version 3 one. So uh, the latest version here as you can see 3.7.2 at the, at the moment I'm downloading it. So just click that button and now the file is gonna be saved to my machine. Now I go to my computer and there for downloads. The file should be there as you can see Python 3.7.2. Okay, so just run that. Okay, just run again, and now we should get prompt with the Python installation. Okay, so here we need to click this one, add Python to pad. And what does pad mean? Pad is, is where a Windows terminal or command line is accessing resources. So if you go to my computer, right click in properties and go for advanced system settings. Therefore go to environment of variables and this is where the windows are storing uh, actual programs here as you can see we have pad variable here and if you go to edit we can see a different kind of options here we have the powershell one uh, for example if the powershell is specified here when we type powershell the powershell is going to be popped up so all the programs are here and when we specify the path of python we can run python from our command line just by running python and if we don't specify the path variable we are not going to be able to run python unless we navigate to the exact same directory and then run python.exe so executable file so here if i type uh, python or actually so here if i clear that and just type uh, notepad you're gonna see that notepad prompt is going to be open so here if i type uh, for example notepad now you see our notepad window is going to be opened and we're going to create process of that notepad because we've actually have predefined path variables for notepad and uh, Using simple commands like notepad, we're able to run the programs themselves since we have the pad installed to them. So, for example, I can go to PowerShell and now I'm inside the PowerShell tool. You see, I can risk, uh, risk the directory, so clear that and so on. So, by clicking on Python to pad, we are actually enabling the machine to run Python from anywhere in, in, in no matter what directory we are using the common window. And therefore, we can just run that command using Python, not specifying the file itself. So it's really important to click that uh, uh, that one option. So just go for install now. Click yes, of course. And now the setup is in process. The Python now is going to be installed. And that programming language is just used for many main tools and functionality, including networking. And as I said, this video is all about uh, creating a web server with Python, which is uh, kind of useful because it's uh, set up really easy and fast. You can set up a fully working web server, for example, like in one command. 
so uh, this is really useful you can use that web server to download remote your virtual you can use that web server in order to actually set up some file and even share some files this is just useful in every aspect you can think of and as you can see the python installation is, is just installing the python for 32 bits it automatically has detected that our machine is 32 bit like yeah so uh close that now the installation is uh almost complete okay so now we are ready now we have python installed and therefore we now can use python from the command line so here if i open my com command prompt now and actually type python i'm gonna get to a typical python shell so here i can type python commands and directly actually see the output of that command without even compiling so this is the basic idea of the python shell but now we are not going to use that so we are going to exit that we, we're going to have future videos about python shell so exit that okay guys so now we have python installed on our machine python version 3 and now it's time to actually see how to implement and create our uh, web server and how can we host different files there so the first thing we have to do is just to open a terminal we are not actually the common problem sorry we are not actually getting to use the python the python shell but uh, here we are going to use the python dash m command which is going to actually provoke and uh, turn on the http the http server which means web server so go for python minus m and therefore specify http dot server and now we need to specify the only the port and we are good to go so uh, if we click we're gonna see that it's going to actually host the server on uh, the ip of four zeros as you can see http 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and what does that mean this means that we did not specify the ip address of our machine as you see we specify only the port right here which is 80 and we did not specify the correct ip address so it's basically listening on everything that comes to that machine on every ip so uh, whenever uh, someone connects to our IP address, it's going to actually uh, connect to our web server. So these zeros occurs because we did not specify our IP address. So if I go to Firefox and actually go for uh, like localhost, we're going to see uh, some different directories here and some different files there. Now let's start analyzing uh, what are every single one of them so for that case just first we close the web server so control c to close and now i prefer powershell so go for powershell here okay so now so now if i type ls which is going to list all the files there so ls i'm going to see that the exact same folders right there and uh, this even contains the hidden files which i am not using so uh, as you can see i have the desktop one the downloads the favorite the links here and uh, this is basically so because we are hosting the patch server in uh, that specified directory for example now we are in c users and my username and that's where we are hosting the web server so when we set up and uh, start the web server it's actually storing all the files from that directory so for example if i go to cd and like desktop now we have like uh, nothing there let's go here and refresh so let's see and create new folder okay now we have folder asd and if I now set up the same Python server, so Python m uh, HTTP server 80, and just refresh the page, we're gonna see that we are in the desktop and we see that folder ASD. Now, one key trick here is that, for example, if I go and create a new folder, BBB, and I do refresh the page. I'm gonna see the folder itself so you need uh, basically a refreshment to see some changes and uh, here is how can you work directly with the operational system with the web servers as you can see we can access files and browse directories for example here as you can see the directory we are hosting in the desktop so this is uh, for example our root the localhost because when we go to any localhost we see the desktop so this is our main directory 
let's see uh, that we are hosted our uh, our server on the folder of desktop here as you can see on desktop so the root directory of the web server is our desktop in that case and if we go for like bbb now we are into root and slash bbb slash so now we are into that directory so uh, this is how the web servers are hosting into some different directories and they are and this is how they are actually storing some files and for example this is like empty file for now but if i go here into bbb and just go for and create new file and let's type it test and therefore insert something and save the file now if i go here and refresh the page i'm going to get that file if i download it if i click the file uh I'm gonna see the content of the file because it's a text one. But if the file with some extensions, for example, PHP one or for example, uh, like uh, SH or Python, I'm going to get download the file or RAR file, I'm going to get the file download. But since the file is text, the web browser is just representing that text to me, the content of the file. So we don't have to worry about it. But this is how you can actually uh, navigate throughout the web server. This is how can you actually use the web servers to download and, and see the files directly in your browser. And this is most likely what the web servers have used. You see it's very easy to use. You just need to set up like one command and to have installed Python on your system. And now everyone can actually access your web server and download files from there. So uh, the other thing I want to show you is that if, if we go to our Python console here, our uh, common prompt, we see all the requests, we see all the requests made, we see that uh, the only get methods were used, and that HTTP uh, slash 1.1200 means that the connection was successful. We see the exact, same, the exact date, and uh, we see the methods here and what was actually requested what was get from the client, what directory was used and where were the clients. So here we have a walk about everything, who actually access what on, the, on our server. So this is the basic usage of web servers. This is how they work and how they upload information. I think that uh, by understanding the Python server, this is like the most basic and easy web server at all. By understanding this, we can actually start and upgrade our knowledge. So from here, I hope you understand how can you install web server and how do they work. And so uh, you understand, I hope you understand also what is the directory tree of the web servers. As you can see where we host the server is called the web, web root directory, where the uh, all the files and now the directory starts of the server one. And we can browse through, through different directories using the slashes. So you see slash bb and slash text.txt. So this is how you can use web servers. I hope you guys enjoyed In the next video, we're going to see how can you install more advanced web server and how can we furthermore use them. So uh, thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next video.